friends and welcome to my channel if you are new or welcome back if you are back either way thank you so so much for clicking on my video today if you are new my name is rabbit and my pronouns are they them today's video i'm super stoked about basically i wanted to customize a couple of shirts because I've just been in the customizing clothes for myself mood lately. So basically this video is going to be four just black thrifted t-shirt customizations or tank tops or long sleeve or just black shirt customizations and then one which is the one we'll start with is like kind of more of a pajama set with like stripies like pinstripe sort of situation but I honestly think everything turned out like fairly cute. A lot of it is really easy if you have a sewing machine and very cheap in my experience if you get your materials from the thrift store and hardware store and that kind of thing. So yes, if that is something that you might be interested in, please feel free to keep on watching. I'll have timestamp down below, uh, but regardless, I hope you enjoy and uh, let's get into it. All right, so for this first shirt, I'm starting with this kind of like pajama lingerie type top that I got at the thrift store for like six bucks seven bucks something like that and just starting by removing anything you don't want on it like in my case a little bow and then i'm taking a tank top that i like the shape and size of and using it as kind of a rough template and using my fabric scissors to cut out a length a little longer than it so i can hem the bottom of it and then i'm taking my sewing pins and just using those to create the outline of the shape that I want down the sides and before I sew it shut I do try it on and make sure that it fits. I try it on inside out so I can really easily change the positioning of any pins that are needed to be changed but then I just use my sewing machine and go with a zigzag stitch all the way down both sides of it and then while I'm at it I'm also hemming the bottom of it since I did cut it there too it's a little bit jagged and I want to make sure that it's nice and clean so just going ahead and using a zigzag stitch to fix up the bottom make it nice and tidy as well and now that it's in a more flattering shape. I want to add a little kind of corset style centerpiece. So I'm using a piece of wrapping paper and a pen to just kind of roughly trace out a vague shape of what I would like it to look like and then folding it in half so I can get a nice symmetrical shape and using some scissors to cut out the shape that I just drew. Open it up, make sure that it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it and I wanted to use a sort of different fabric. Um, so I have this leftover from when I went fabric shopping around Halloween time. Halloween time is my favorite time to get fabric. Um, you can get so many spooky things. This one has like bats and moons and ghosts and little cats and it's just super cute and I'm just um, trimming out the pattern that I have traced just doing it a little larger than the pattern that I traced so that way I can hem all the edges and it'll be nice and clean but using my fabric scissors to do that which by the way best investment ever oh my god if you've been using regular scissors please invest in fabric scissors if you're doing like sewing stuff then I'm just using uh, my sewing pins laying down all the edges of this and pinning them down so I can hem the edges <laughs> with the sewing machine makes it a little bit easier. Uh, it'd probably be an extra helpful step to iron it um, here if you wanted to do that, but I'm lazy and this is fine. So um, if it works, it works. Making sure it fits in a nice way, I'm happy with it. So then I can go ahead and use my sewing machine to zigzag sit, stitch all the way down. Of course you could stitch everything by hand, as always, just takes like a million years longer and if you have a sewing machine, it's just super helpful. Then I'm grabbing my measuring tape because I want to figure out where I want to put my grommets and also using them so I can figure out <laughs> if the size makes sense. Um, lining them up in a kind of position and figuring it out until I like it and then marking down with my measuring tape the spots that I would like them to go. Usually I'm not so good about using measuring tapes and stuff so I'm very proud of myself for doing slightly more professionalism than I'm used to. And I'm using a little pair of nail scissors um, to just cut out holes for the grommets. Since the grommets are so big and this uh, fabric is pretty tightly woven I think it's okay to use um, big nail scissors but later in the video when I do something with a little bit of finer fabric um, I use some seam rippers so it really depends what you're going for. Um, generally though a seam ripper will work for most things. Anyway then I'm taking the grommet attachment pieces <laughs> I don't know what they're called but like the little stand and the little stick and the hammer and just you know attaching them so I continue this down both sides of the top and then I'm taking this black ribbon and just threading it through trying a couple of different designs until I get one that makes sense and if I were to do this project again I would have waited until this portion was attached before um, putting the grommets in but hey you live and you learn it's fine either way I put on the top and while I'm wearing it I use safety pins to attach the 
corseted piece um, in a spot that I would like and that looks good. And then I use my sewing machine to just sew it down in all those spots. And then I am using my scissors to just go ahead and cut an extra hole through um, the material. This is why I wish I would have just, you know, grommeted through the two pieces of fabric, but it's fine. And then I rethread all the laces and I'm happy with how it looks. So that part of the top is done. And I wasn't really liking the white lacy part on the bra cup sort of situation. It looked a little like French made-ish to me. So I wanted to cover it with some black lace instead. And I'm using some fabric glue to hold it down, but I do end up adding a couple of safety stitches afterwards. And then with some leftover piece of fabric, I wanted to make these like cute little drapey sleeves so I'm using this portion of it. I take the measurement of my arm and cut that in half basically to get um, the measurement of the sleeve and then use like the first piece I cut as the pattern for the second piece that I cut. Not super professional, I'm just kind of basing this off how I make doll clothes and it seems to work. Um, either way I'm hemming the, all the raw edges of both sleeves so using my sewing machine handy dandy to make sure all the raw edges are nice and clean and then I'm actually just hand stitching with like honestly like a handful of stitches a corner of the sleeve to like a corner of the top I wanted them to be like really loose and drapey kind of give like a princessy feel and then I wanted to add a little bit more lace to the top of the bra cup thing because uh, this, the, hmm, I am flat, and this top was made for someone with a bigger chest than me, so in order to kind of, like, bridge some of the gap between my chest and this top, I decided to add, like, an extra layer of lace, and it kind of just makes everything be a little more disguised in there, so that's fine. Uh, using some fabric glue and some pins to put that in place. I think I also end up using a couple of hand stitches eventually to make sure that it stays in place, but regardless, it's looking good. And then I wanted to add some extra sleeves. So I'm using more of the leftover scrap fabric from the bottom of the thing. And while the top is on my mannequin, I can kind of measure out how long I need the sleeves to be, basing it off of the black strappy sleeves. So I take that fabric, fold it in half, and then just cut down the center so that I can get two straps because I didn't have enough fabric to make it as thick as I'd like, but it's fine. It's fine. We do what we can. <laughs> Regardless, I wanted to hem both edges. If I had more fabric, I would have just kind of sewed it in half, turned it inside out, and had kind of like a tube. But since that wasn't an option, since I wanted the sleeves to be a little bit thicker, I ended up hemming both edges using my sewing machine to secure those. And honestly, it works. It's not as thick of straps as I would have liked, but we'll live survivable and I'm just attaching them with hand stitching honestly anything that you're sewing around lots of lace and lots of weird layers and stuff it's just easier to do hand stitching it's you don't want to mess up with the machine and get it all tangled and caught and this and that so for this part I am just hand stitching the sleeves um, pretty much right next to where the straps on the original shirt are um, but kind of underneath and then I have this Halloween charm that's just like a big metal spider and I'm using some embroidery floss to make it as like a little centerpiece kind of replacing where the bow was in the original top and now it's like a cute little spider um, or a cute big spider I guess and then I'm taking some leftover chain from my brother's Warhammer days and I wanted to use it to kind of make like a chain detailing on the top um, so I'm using some embroidery thread to add a couple of stitches so that I can attach the chain and I attach it in four spots basically on both corners next to the spider and next to the armpits as usual hand stitching is the best for this I would not recommend using fabric glue because it's just going to get really goopy and stuff and I'm happy with that and it's time to make a matching collar because I have a smidge left of leftover material which I was saving for this purpose I'm measuring my neck and then cutting that same length of fabric and then I'm folding it in half and using my pins to make sure that it stays in place. And then I'm taking a piece of ribbon so that I can have something to tie it with and just setting it aside for later. Then using my sewing machine to stitch all the way down so that I can turn it inside out and have like these super beautiful, clean, not raw edges, which is what I would have done for the sleeves if I had enough fabric, but I didn't, so it's okay. Um, and then with those little lengths of ribbon that I set aside earlier, I am attaching them inside of the kind of tube that is open and sewing those in so that 
we have straps that we can attach our thing with. And then I just have some little metal accessories that I wanted to attach. So I'm trying some different designs. This is the one that I ended up going with. It's basically like a big key ring and a bunch of random different sizes of studs and stuff. And then I'm using a scrap piece of ribbon to make sort of a holder for the keyring because I didn't want to sew it directly on. I wanted to kind of be on like a little strap and making sure that it's centered by folding the piece in half. I am using my needle and thread to just kind of sew it onto one layer so the stitching doesn't show through. For the studs and spikes and whatever, they are all just screw on, so I'm just poking a teeny tiny hole with my seam ripper and then screwing in all the spikes until they are all nice and in place. And then I'm using more of those leftover chains to just attach detail chains that can hang down. And eventually I thought it would be cool to attach them to the top, so I'll show you how we do that when we get there. But for now, I'm just kind of attaching little chains so they can dangle down in kind of a loopy pattern. You can see the first one that I attached, and then I'm trying to figure out how I want to attach the other one. So I'm using a little like lobster clasp, I guess, for jewelry so that um, I can take it on and off because knowing me, I would definitely rip it and break it if they were permanently attached to them when I was taking it on or off. So I'm using my needle and thread to attach the chain to kind of the corner of the strap on the shirt. Then I wanted to add like one more piece of chain but kind of dangling lower down so that we get like a nice layering effect. So I just use my needle and thread to make that happen. Just a couple of stitches holds it in pr place pretty well. And this is the final result. It looks um, pretty cute in my opinion because when I originally got this top I thought I would wear it for going out but like layered under other stuff and I just didn't ever feel comfortable in it so I never wore it and now I feel like it might be a little more excited to wear it. Definitely feels like this kind of goth fairy vibe that I really wanted to achieve when I was 14, so this uh, top feels kind of like a love letter to 14 year old me and what they would have loved to have made and worn and such and such. Um, I love the black and white stripes, they remind me of Gomez Adams. <laughs> Okay, so for this next one, we are starting with this black velvet shirt that I found at the thrift store for under $5. It's way too big for me, so I'm starting by putting it on inside out and using some safety pins to pin it in place, basically so that it fits me in a more flattering way. I really like this method of making clothes fit you better, um, putting them on inside out and pinning them in place because then they really fit the precise shape of your body, if that makes sense. And then I'm using my sewing machine to just follow all the lines that I pinned as exactly as I can. Once that's done, I can cut off all the excess fabric that I will not need inside of it, but don't throw this out because you can make lots of stuff out of it, like chokers and stuff, which I will show later in this video. Then I can turn the shirt back right side out. And I wanted to have this sort of lace-up corset style detail sort of thing, so I'm taking all these random rings that I have collected over the years that have just been sitting in a bag and some scrap ribbon and fabric glue and basically folding the ribbon in half with the fabric glue between and using a pin to hold it in place until it's dry. Basically I'm leaving them overnight and when I come back tomorrow all of them will be nice, dry, crispy, and ready to be used as my sort of lace-up thing. So I put the shirt on and while it's right side out I put safety pins in all the spots that I want my lace-up pieces to go essentially. Honestly this didn't work perfectly because I ended up having to move some but it's fine, it's fine. We live, we learn, um, and life goes on. Either way, I'm replacing all of the safety pins with different rings that I've put together. Some of them are D-rings, some of them are old belt buckle sort of things. If you don't have any of these, I would recommend buying them from the hardware store. That is where you will find them cheapest. Regardless, I'm pinning all of them in place, and then I wanted the shirt to also kind of have lines going up it, so once I've decided a nice placement for that, I just take the same red ribbon that I used on D-ring situation and pinning it along the tank top. And before I sew it all in place, I do try it on to make sure that it's looking good and just adjust anything that I need. But once I'm happy with that, I'm using a needle and thread to just really loosely hand stitch everything in there before I go over it with my machine because with really heavy stuff like this, it just moves around so much and you wanna make sure that it 
it stays in place. I found out this the hard way because I had to take out my really messy, messed up machine stitches from earlier and do it a bunch of times over. It was a mess. Regardless, hand stitching everything in place and the D-rings, of course, we will hand stitch those fully to the shirt to make sure that they're not like dangling all over the place because they are pretty heavy. I'm taking my sewing machine. I'm using the maximum setting for the width and the minimum setting for the length so that I get like these really huge stitches. Uh, basically, I didn't think the ribbon would be strong enough to hold everything together on its own, so I'm trying to almost do like an embroidery stitch over it. Yeah, it looks really messy, but from far away, you can't tell, and it's fine, I'm happy with it, and it just feels a lot more secure. And then I'm using extra needle and thread to just really make sure that the D-rings are attached properly to the velvet, to the ribbon, to everything possible, because I'm gonna be like, lacing them up. I feel like there's probably better ways to do this project, but it's fine. It's fun. I had a lot of fun with this, and yeah, as you can see, I removed one D-ring because it was coming up too high, but I move it down lower later in the video, and as you can see, I'm just lacing up the top, making sure that I like how it's going, and so far so good. Uh, so one thing that I noticed about this tank top is that one of the straps was kind of falling apart there, so I used these o-rings that I got at the hardware store for about a dollar each, and some embroidery thread, using a needle and thread to attach the o-ring to the top of the top, and then cutting off that little frayed piece of strap and tying it on really well to the other side of the o-ring. This kind of feels like a little bit industrial or something, I don't know, it gives it a cool extra metallic look. If I were to do this again, maybe I would have done a different situation with the straps to strengthen them, but I think it works. It just makes it a little heavier. All right, and now it's time to do an extra accessory. So we're taking some leftover scrap fabric from the shirt that we cut earlier and cutting a length that is equal to our neck, pinning it in half and using the sewing machine to sew it. Ignore the fact that there's red ribbon in there. It was I don't, it, it didn't work out, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, regardless, I'm just using a straight stitch to go all the way down, sew my velvet inside out so that when I turn it the right side, it will look really nice and clean and beautiful, which it does, check it out, and ignore the red ribbon in there, it's, it, it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. Once it's turned inside out, I sandwich a little bit of the red ribbon inside of the kind of tube part and then use my sewing machine to put it in place. This will act as the strap to our choker because honestly like tying a velvet choker with just itself would be very frustrating and I'm using an extra o-ring that I had and some embroidery thread put the o-ring in the middle of the velvet choker and honestly you could leave it here this is a really classic good look in my opinion and maybe I will make another one that I do leave it here and is like a little bit more simplistic with just like velvet choker with an o-ring um, because it's like super easy to make but since I wanted it to be kind of matchy matchy with the top I decided to add like a red ribbon going all the way down don't know if I love this but it's fine it works and again I'm just kind of really loosely hand stitching it in place and then using my sewing machine to do a really wide short stitch all along it so I have like kind of the same texture as down the top and this is what it looks like um feels very like kind of like 90s nostalgia goth ish um feels like a cartoon goth honestly that's what I was trying to go for with a lot of these is I just uh, <laughs> my goal in so many of my aesthetics that I've cycled through has just been to look like a cartoon character whether it's a cartoon fairy or a cartoon goth or a cartoon pastel whatever it is cartoon is the best aesthetic <laughs> in my opinion but I like how it turned out it's pretty long so it's almost like a a mini dress um, which is kind of fun and I ended up just like poking some holes in the velvet so that I could feed the ribbon through it and you wouldn't like see a poking off the bottom it honestly worked out fine I was trying to do like a cartoon vampire look and I think it works I think it's cute um, it's not like a proper corset by any means and it's not as flattering as a proper corset would be by any means but whatever it's like my little cheap alternative and it works for the next project I'm starting with a long black velvet dress from the thrift store I was originally looking for just a long sleeve shirt but I found this dress for 10 bucks and I figured hey I might as well make a sh shirt and a skirt so skirt coming later eventually one day maybe I don't know if I'll film it but regardless this one's about the shirt so I'm just cutting off a length that when I tried it on was a good measurement from how far I wanted it to go down from the neckline so using some scissors to cut that off and then I put the shirt on inside out and use a piece of chalk to just mark down basically where I'd like to cut off the sleeves since I want to do this detached sleeve sort of thing using my scissors I just cut along the line 
that I made and use the sleeve that I just cut as a pattern. Cut the same thing on the other side. So I have like a t-shirt with some detached sleeves now. And since I just cut everything, I'm going to make sure that the hems are nice and not raw. So I'm going ahead, pinning down all the raw edges, and then going ahead with my sewing machine to just secure those and make it nice, clean, professional. You know how we do it. I mean, and not, but you know, <laughs> we try, we try. Then I put on the shirt and use some safety pins to attach these sleeves in a spot that I think would be flattering, kind of on the front of my arm. Now that I have a guideline, I can use my embroidery needle and thread to attach some leftover D-rings from attaching two to each arm at the top of the t-shirt and then two to the sleeves at the bottom that I'm gonna use this double bolt snap to attach. But for now, I am just securing all the D-rings to their appropriate spots and measured out by the safety pins and then I can can attach the bolt snap to them together so that they're a little longer. And then I wanted to make a design on this shirt, so I've seen a lot of cool shirts with like a bat, um, so I wanted to do a bat on this one, so I looked up some pictures that I liked and tried to kind of emulate one on a folded in half piece of parchment paper using some markers to kind of sketch out a rough design that I like. It takes a couple of tries, so don't be afraid to mess around until you have something that you're happy with. And then I pin the parchment paper in half so it doesn't budge while I'm cutting it, and just use some regular scissors to cut the shape out. Out. and I like to always do these patterns in half so that we get a nice symmetrical thing happy with the shape and size of it so I take this scrap piece of old velvet or velour or I don't know what it is but regardless <laughs> cutting out a piece of the velvet that I will use to make a fabric patch and then I'm using this heat bond fabric that this is my first time using it I think it works pretty well don't know what a pressing cloth is but you're supposed to use one of those when you're ironing it instead of a pressing cloth I'm using parchment paper because figured it's probably the same I'm using it on the highest heat with no steam and it just adds yeah, a little bit of structure, not as much as I thought. If I do this in the future, I'll probably buy like an extra firm one of these. Uh, but yeah, this stuff is just called Heat Bond and I got it at Michael's and it was fine. So then I take my pattern that I cut out from parchment paper and pin it down to my soon to be patch and use a Sharpie to just trace out the shape on the back of the Heat Bond textile interfacing, whatever it's called. Honestly, that's the best part about this stuff is that you can draw really clear patterns on it, in my opinion. And since the velvet or velour or whatever this is doesn't fray too much and I use the interfacing, I wasn't too worried about hemming it. I just cut it straight out and put it on, pinned it in place, and then took it off and used some extra sewing pins to really secure it. That's why it looks a little bit baggy, but honestly, I'm happy with the way it turned out. So once I've pinned it in place, tried it on and made sure that it fits, I can use my sewing machine to just do a nice little straight stitch all along the bat. It was a little bit annoying to go around the corners, but I just found that going slow and using the hand crank was super helpful. Then um, the sleeves are still a little too short for my liking, so to extend them a little, I thought I'd add a little bit of lace. So I'm using this stuff that I got um, on sale at Fabricland a while ago, cutting a piece that is the same length as the sleeve and using some pins to pin it across. Since it's pinned all the way around, I also pin the side down of it, turn it inside out so I can make sure that it fits. And always when I do sleeves, I like them to be kind of bell sleeves, so I usually turn around the sleeves. So essentially what used to be at the wrist is now at the top of my arm and what used to be at the top of my arm is now at the wrist, what I'm attaching the lace to. Then I wanted to add these little like lace up details at the bottom. So to make sure that they were even on both sides, I'm cutting a little triangle pattern that is in the vague shape that I want it and using a marker to just mark where I want all my grommets to go. And I'm using a ruler to kind of just make sure that it's straight down from the second bat point. I figured that would be a good way to make sure it was even on both sides and using my chalk to mark down the spots that I would like to put my grommets in. And now I'm using a seam ripper to poke a teeny tiny hole in the velvet um, where I can put a teeny tiny grommet in. These ones are very small and I'm just using my little grommet tool and the little stick and the hammer to attach them. As always, I have trouble getting a good clear shot of this, but it's pretty straightforward. And then I'm using some purple ribbon to thread through and do a lace-up sort of situation. I wish I had a ribbon that matched the purple of the bat, but I couldn't find one, so just please use your imagination, pretend that this ribbon matches the bat and that it looks really good, or that the bat matches the ribbon, whatever you think looks better. I don't know. Um, but hopefully one day I will get a purple that is not so 
purple. Whatever, it's fine. Regardless, just lacing it up. And this is the final result. Um, it was loosely kind of inspired slash based on this Be Goth doll that I got on Facebook Marketplace recently. Whomst I love. She's so freaking cute. Um, but yeah, I like this top a lot. It feels, again, like a cartoon goth kind of look. Um, the velvet, I think, is super cute. The sleeves feel like super fun and clunky. And again, it just feels really nostalgic. Uh, feels like something I would have loved to have when I was 14 and I just, I don't know, feels fun. And here's me posing with the doll that it's based on. She's so cute, Belladonna, I love her. She's super special. I wish that I had like a proper doll and not just an action figure of like the Bleeding Edge Goths, but it's still really cool to have one. Yeah, it's my little homage to her. <laughs> okay, so for this next one, I'm starting with this kind of basic black tank top that I got at the thrift store. It's sort of lacy and it was really ill-fitting. So I'm just doing that thing where I hem in the sides, You've seen me do it on the other ones, so it's not worth explaining again. But yeah, just using my sewing machine to kind of tighten up the sides and make it a little bit more form-fitting. And then I'm taking a piece of leftover wrapping paper and tracing my design on it. I wanted to go for like a super vampire-y looking cross. It was kind of important to me that it didn't look like super Christian or Catholic or anything like that, because don't identify with that. But I think that if I did it on like a black lacy top and did the cross in like red velvet, of it, then it would kind of come across as like more vampiric in that sort of sense. So tracing out the shape until I get one that I am happy with. I had to make it a slightly larger than I originally anticipated, but as usual, I'm just drawing half the design and then folding the paper in half and then using my scissors to cut it out so we get a nice, even, symmetrical design. And once it's cut out, I can unfold it, measure it on the top, and I'm just taking a tiny piece of red velour that I got from the fabric store and then a piece of this interfacing heat bond stuff, parchment paper, hot iron, and no steam when I fuse them together. Then I take the pattern that I made out of the wrapping paper and pin it to the interfacing paper, trace it out with a marker, use my sewing scissors to cut it out, and then I want to just center it to make sure that it like looks like it's in the right spot. I do try it on before I sew it down just to make sure that it is in a correct space and I am happy with how it looks. I can go ahead and use my sewing machine to just do a straight stitch all the way down it and around it. It's definitely one of the simpler designs that I did, but I'm honestly super happy with it. I honestly thought it would be one of my least favorite designs because normally I don't like stuff with like crosses and crucifixes and stuff like that on it, but I really like it. It feels really vampire-y, feels really cute, and I'm excited to wear it. It feels um, like a good summer kind of top. And for my last piece, I'm taking a black tank top that I got at the thrift store for like $2, something like that. And I have this pattern that I cut out from a previous video, but it really didn't work out last time I did it. I'm on a patch because I just used acrylic paint. And this time I finally bought white fabric paint. Unfortunately, I was honestly not that happy with my results. I have a very um, in-depth video that talks all about how to stencil and how to cut out your stencils if you are interested in that. But I figured I'd just show an update of doing the fabric paint and talk about my experience with that because it was really disappointing. Um, I think maybe next time I need to use a different type of fabric paint or maybe use like a silver instead of a white, but I, I really wanted to do a white print on a black background and I had to do so many layers and it was freaking horrible. So basically I'm using a makeup sponge and this fabric paint that honestly is pretty terrible that I just got at Michael's. I'm dabbing it on and making sure that it dries really well between all the layers because otherwise, in my experience, it gets ridiculously smudgy and looks really not good. I'm doing these super thin layers and using my hairdryer between them. I lost track of how many layers I had to do. It was probably way over 10 and the paint was just getting like so sticky and acrylic-y and latexy. Latexy is the way I would describe it. Yeah, I had to just spend a ton of time with my really old hair dryer and took forever, but regardless. Finally, I'm getting to the point where I can peel off the stencil. Normally, this is a super satisfying thing for me, but because of the amount of freaking layers I had to do to get like a nice opaque design, it just was sticking all over, super difficult um, to get like a nice line. I honestly like struggled a lot. I don't even know if it's like fully centered. This was like a little bit of a disaster honestly i'm i'm being dramatic probably it it probably doesn't look as bad as i as i think it 
does especially when you're like from far away but oh man I was pretty disappointed regardless this like just in the product that I bought uh, but this is the final look for what it is it's fine it works it does the job that it needs to do another good summer outfit I really like cottony tank tops like this they're super comfy really great to hang around the house in in the summer as well as for like sleeping in and I like kind of thin tank tops like this and I love this freaking design I saw it on a Facebook marketplace tank top that someone was selling for $40 and I just took a screenshot of the tank top that they were selling and blew up the picture, printed it out, and did a stencil like that. And honestly, I think it works out great. So that's that. All right, and that is all I have for you guys today. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching till the end. That honestly means so, so much to me. Really, really appreciate it. I hope that you, wherever you are, are having a wonderful day, night, wherever it is, wherever you are. And um, yeah, hope to see you in the next one. Hope that you are very kind to yourself and the people around you. And um, that's all I got. Have a good one. Bye.